What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Special Edition of the Closure Revolution Radio Collaboration with the Sassabee Spotlight Sessions. The Berlin LLC and Closure Revolution and the L- Accessibility will be highlighting the Special Olympics World Games in Berlin 2023. Guests will include athletes, coaches, volunteers, ambassadors, and technical, technical dele- delegates involved in the Games. We believe it's important to showcase all of the amazing work that goes into the World Games and how it serves as a catalyst for building a more inclusive world. Thanks, Novi. My name is Josh Basil. I am also your co-host for today's show. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. I'm Novi Craven. I'm your other, I'm your other co-host for today's for today's show. I'm a proud Special Olympics athlete and employee of Special Olympics International. I play bocce, basketball, and about any other sport you can think of. I love Special Olympics and the work our organization does to, to, to promote friendship, respect, and, of course, inclusion. Today, we will be talking with Sarah Jane Borchardt, Manager, Translation for Easy Language for the Special Olympics World Games. Because the World Games brings so many people together, cultures, and languages, translation is, in, is incredibly important for all participants to access every part of the games. We can't wait to learn more about the, the work that goes into tran- translation and, and how the World Games will be the most inclusive event on earth. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. And welcome to the Inclusion Revolution podcast. Thank you very much for having me. It's such an honor and such a pleasure to be on your podcast. So, Novi, I think Novi, I think you're up with the first question. Uh, can you tell me? Can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you first got involved with Special Olympics? Um, Yes, I have to admit that up until two years ago, I didn't know anything about Special Olympics. At that time, I was working at the small translation agency for Easy Language. And one day while I was traveling home from work, I found the job job posting of the LOC on the Internet. And I did some research and I was immediately amazed by the work of Special Olympics. And I knew I want to be part of that. Um, Of course, the job offer expired on the same day I found it. So my plan was to put my son to sleep and then send off the application in time. But but as it happens, sometimes with young children, he didn't want to sleep that day. But in the end, I managed to send my application in time. And now I'm here. Um, So my background is I'm a translator for easy language, but I'm also a translator for Italian um, as well. Can you tell us uh, what is easy language translation and... What drew you to this subject and give us an overview of how it works. Yeah, well, Easy Language is a scientifically based, um, simplified uh, language variant of a certain standard language. And this sentence, of course, was not an Easy Language. So in Easy Language, we have different rules. For example, we have short sentences. That is, we have approximately eight to ten words per sentence. In Easy Language, we use easy words. Um, and this rule is not an easy one. I often ask myself, is that an easy word? Is that not an easy word? And then I've got different possibilities. For example, I can look it up at the dictionary to see if I find an indication on the word itself. And I can also ask my reviewers, for example. Um, in easy language, we use pictograms and icons, where possible, because, because they have to understand the text. And we avoid foreign words. Um, sometimes if this is not possible, then we explain the words, we explain the pronunciation and we explain the meaning. But this depends on the context. For example, um, I do not explain Special Olympics related terms to our athletes, but um, I explain them to, to the audience that approaches Special Olympics for the very first time. 
And we also avoid metaphors and idioms because the ambiguity sometimes is difficult to understand. And we have also some rules that regard the layout of a text. For example, we have a big font size and we have a big line spacing. That is the distance between the lines because we think that the text that is easy to, un to, to read is also easy to understand. And all these rules, well, I was mentioning only a few, but um, in fact, we have some more rules um, make of a text a text that is easy to understand. And this text then is reviewed by, the by, by people from the target group. And if they can understand every word of the text, then the text is finished and we can use it. Um, if they do not understand every word, if there are still difficult words or sentences, then we try to change these words. I say try because um, I often get the feedback that names are difficult, but of course we cannot change names. So maybe we um, explain the meaning of a name or we write the, the pronunciation or pronounce, pronounce a name. But of course, we cannot change names. And yeah, these are the basic rules um, of easy language. Um, actually, I first got into contact with easy language um, in 2009 while I was living in Italy because I was working at the sports ground for people um, with disability and without disability. And I was uh, responsible for a small journal written in Italian language. And together with my employer, um, we developed some sort of easy Italian without knowing that the concept of easy language already existed. And yeah, that was my first contact with easy language back in Germany. Then I completed the course um, on easy language and yeah, started working at a small translation agency. Thank you for sharing that, Sarah. I like that. I like, that. I like how you broke that down because, you know, definitely a lot of people were like, what is e easy language? And, you know, when you say e easy, easy language, people are like, okay, it's an easy language. English is, is, is an easy language, but, you know, different types of languages that people don't understand is a good way to for people to understand them when you break it down and explain what it is so that I liked how you explained that. Thank you very much. You know, I often get the feedback from my clients that they did some changes on the text on their own because they say, yeah, in the end it's German. It's just an easy version of German. And I'm like, uh, no, we have certain rules and there are reasons why we have these rules. And yeah, but um, like you said, easy, easy language is so important because it helps people to participate, to take their own decisions. And yeah, so important. Why is easy language so important? How will it be used during the World Games? Well, easy language is so important because everybody is able to understand easy language. And uh, in this way, easy language helps people to, to participate, to take own decisions. Easy language also gives um, access to information because, you know, if I have some rights, but I'm not informed about my rights, how can I fight for them? So uh, easy language is, for me, is the basis of inclusion and accessibility, for example. And um, during the World Games, we will have um, easy language in nearly all fields. So we will have the signage in easy language, for example. We will have information on allergens and on the bins uh, in easy language. We will have an athlete's handbook, important information, and we are going to have this handbook in um, all seven Special Olympics languages, but in some sort of easy language variant. And we are going to have um, the app in easy German and easy English. We're going to have parts of the website in easy language. So we will have uh, easy language in various fields. Thank you, Sarah. And one of the most amazing things about the World Games is the, is the continued impact it has on the country for years after the event concludes. How do you make easy language a sustainable kind of lasting part of German culture once the World Games are over? Well, you have to know that with reference to easy language in Germany, already a few things are going on. Um, but for me, this is not enough because I want every museum, every sports club, every office, every authority to provide information in easy language because it is so important. And with the World Games, we also have the possibility to raise awareness for easy language, because like I said before, we will have easy language in all kinds of you know, sectors and fields. So um, we have the possibility to raise awareness for easy language also in those countries where the concept of easy language does not exist or is not well known. So for me, this is um, a great part of sustainability. Thank you for that. If someone would like to pursue uh, easy language as a career, what steps would you recommend them take? Well, for me, this depends on, uh, a little bit on the country you're living in, because like I said, in, in Germany, already a few things are going on. We have got a lot of courses, we have got a lot of workshops. There's a great offer for easy language. 
So this for me would also always be the first step. So to, you know, take part in a workshop to, to learn the basics, but the most important thing is to have the contact with the target group because you're not able to decide whether a word or um, a term or a sentence is easy if you do not have the contact with the target group you're writing or you're translating for. So for me, this is the most important thing. So try to find some, try to get into contact with the target group. And that's, that's the most important thing. That's awesome. And how can companies and the business world easily adopt easy language to make their websites, their resources, and products more accessible. Uh, have you seen any improvements over time in language accessibility? Well, like, like we said before, easy language um, is good because everybody's able to understand easy language. And I noticed in Germany that a lot of companies um, have recognized or are recognizing this of, um, advantage of easy language because I get a lot of requests from companies that want to translate their website or, uh, you know, a flyer into easy language. And I think this is a good development. And um, I notice also an improvement um, that has come, you know, over time. So um, I, I would suggest um, to talk with a translation agency, for example, um, that is responsible and has um, a lot of experience in the field of easy language because um, we have some partic particularities in easy language. Like we said before, we have a big font size, for example. We have also something that needs to be taken into consideration when it comes to websites. So I would um, suggest, you know, the companies to, um, to talk with a translator or a translation office. But like I said before, um, there are many advantages because I'm sure you will get fewer complaints, for example, because the language is much more clearer and we will have we have so many examples and explanations in easy language. And that's also one of the feedbacks I get from my clients that are companies. Thank you, Sarah. What are you looking forward to the most about the World Games? Um, I think the atmosphere and of course the joy of the athletes. But also, I'm also looking forward to see whether everything that we are planning right now, you know, whether we are able to to realize that and whether everything works like we are planning it to work. And I'm also, you know, looking forward to the exchange to discuss with people from all over the world the concept of easy language, because we will have, you know, the basis for discussion because the science will be in easy language. So easy language is everywhere. And but also to talk um with people from all over the world about the concept of inclusion. I'm so curious to hear, you know, the opinions from people from all over the world. In a few words, could you answer the question, what does accessibility, accessibility inclusion mean to you? Well, for me, this um, accessibility inclusion mean that um, we all have equal rights that everybody has the access to information, to sports offers, to work, and so on. So, um, like I said before, um, easy language for me is, is the starting point because it, it enables people to understand what is going on. And yeah, for me, it's um, it means that we all have the same rights. Thank you, Sarah, for joining today's episode of Inclusion Radio, Revolution Radio Podcast. It's a spotlight session collaboration. I think what we learned today is the word in the that the word, even in the most simple form, matters so much. It was fantastic learning more about easy language, how it can be used to bring people together from around the world. You can learn more about Accessory, the Inclusion Revolution Radio, and Special Olympics by subscribing on YouTube and following us on Instagram. Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you all, and we are looking forward to our next episode. Everyone have a great day, and thank you for being with us to the end of the show today.